Thank you. So the topic suggested was distros, and I find the idea of a distro fascinating because I don't really know what a distro is in theory. We all know what they are in practice. We all have our own allegiances, the distros we think are great, the ones we hate, whatever. And I don't really know where this comes from. It's an emergent phenomenon. There weren't distros really before uh, Linux, I would say. And there, about the same time, there were forks in the BSD world, so they're kind of equivalents to distros there. But before that, it didn't really happen. At least they weren't consciously that. I guess you could say the way Linux forked into different manufacturers was a bit like a distro, but it, it didn't have the same feel at all. So what is the essence of a distro? It seems to be a culture that goes with a particular distro, a philosophy, a bunch of personalities, a bunch of, of effort that produces an object that people find of value. Um, at this point, it's hard to remember that some of these distros started and how, how they started. Fedora, Ubuntu, and, uh, well, maybe not Ubuntu, but Debian and so on started 20 years ago and more. So the people who started it are mostly gone. They're not, they don't shape it anymore, but the project lives on. And of course, there have been many distros that have disappeared too. But you can, in retrospect, say, well, they never really had much of a life. Some people still fondly remember Slackware. I think it still exists. Well, Slackware is still on the But yeah. Idrisil? How many people run that? So, so the, the basic question, no, actually I invite comments because I don't, I'm trying to explore this and I don't have the answers. What is it that people find important about distros? They, they're almost like sports teams to people. There's a kind of loyalty that has a basis that doesn't seem completely rational. Of course we can argue about the technical merits, but sometimes we argue when um, some distro copies something from our favorite distro. Is there nothing better than copying the best from each other? So I, I don't really know what the core is, but I think if you get down to it, it's the team of people that are creating it, it's the culture of the users, and, and that's about it. They crystallize around things like release philosophies. Like, I think it's very interesting whether you have a rolling release or one with episodic releases. And, and I don't really understand modularity. You helped a bit, but I still don't understand it. It kind of feels like a timed release system has tried to change itself into partly rolling. And why not just go all the way rolling? Well, the answer is people love for instance, RHEL, because it stands still for five years. We also hate it for that, but we love it and hate it. So it's very hard to see what the right answer is there. The units inside a distro, the packages, those don't come naturally either. It's really hard to find the modularity in systems because if you make the packages too small, they have a bunch of dependencies which creates a lot of problems. And if you make them too big, then you get too much when you say, I want this feature. So I think what the Linux world has done is a bunch of real life experiments on how to modularize software. And I don't really think we've learned the lessons from them. I think we haven't examined them. And, and I think there's something valuable there. I, I think the stuff should be rethought. But I'd like to ask people here, why did you choose your release, the one you, you use normally, the, the distro? Hello. Hi. Uh, so the distro is pretty much dead, in my opinion. Uh, there is no distro. Uh, <laughs> the best place to put your software now is the one that gets out of the way. Alpine is a great example of that. Um, it used to be, as a developer, I you know lit my desktop up. I chose a distribution that put in front of me all the things I needed to do my job and get out of the way otherwise. And those things that I needed was 
184 packages that are interrelated to each other that have services and and uh, init scripts and cron tabs and all these things that went in there IP tables um, in my experience most like the developers I work with they don't care about that uh, they do their npm install they do their their um, uh, package requirements install and and they use very little of the distro they only care about the things that they brought with them and like a text editor they don't need cron or any all those other things because it's all in app now you have things like uh celery and schedulers and stuff like that it's all in the application programming environment and if you think about it that was the whole point behind the distro was to bring you a consistent python that all work together we don't need to do that anymore we have things like npm and uh i guess pip so like i i recall 15 years ago saying never install a Perl RPM module. Don't do it. Use CPAN. It's it's mm -hmm. it's like use the Perl tool to manage the Perl bits. Don't ask Red Hat to do it because they're going to fail and be wrong all the time. Like you're just going to be chasing all the time. Um, and so, and you know, 15 years later, now we have Alpine. And what does it do? It gives me a kernel with block with devices and a proc. And it gives me a glibc. I use the wrong word, but basically a POSIX interface. And that's it. And all my programs are like, no problem. I can deal with that. So how much do you believe that? Is it is it true that you could sit on Windows or or Mac OS or QNIX just as happily? Docker is a manifestation of that. Well, wait a second. Go is a manifestation of that. But there's some fixed points in your world. Is the fixed point Go? Fixed point. What does that the mean? Point you get this. It's the fulcrum in which you get to put your lever on to make things happen. POSIX. POSIX? Open file, close file, move cursor, read block, close block, write block, like really basic stuff. As a programmer, I bring with me all the libraries that do complicated things like LDAP and SSL. And those tools need POSIX, but I don't know and I don't care because as a developer, I just NPM install. Superstitiously, I believe POSIX was incomplete and you always got system dependencies in packages. But are you saying that's not the case anymore? To your point, though, POSIX technically in the spec is incomplete. There's all these extensions to it, right? So if you look at, I can't remember, there's like kernels, implementations in the Linux kernel that have, for files, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but there's other ones where it's an, you don't need to implement it, but it's technically a POSIX extension, so you may or may not. So there's a ton of systems that do that still. Um, the Linux kernel has documentation on it, as a lot of the other systems probably do. Okay. How about other people? Do people not care about distros? Uh, I care about distros a lot. Uh, and the oversimplification is to, is to say quality control, but that isn't the core. The core is that the distros are a bunch of separate experiments and they're solving in parallel, a bunch of different different problems of integration. Uh, I think you're all aware of the cases where uh, you can get in, impossible dependency trees. You must have version six and version seven simultaneously, and they are incompatible with one another. The distros, and in the in the case of modules, break that impossibility into possible sets. Identify them for me, ship them to me, and allow me to not have to solve that problem. The Go team is trying to solve that problem, and they pointed out it's an NP-complete problem. Mm -hmm. It's not a fun little thing that you do in an afternoon. So the, without any magic theoretical background, the various distributions bang their, way, bang their heads against the wall until they get something that works for multiple languages, so I can use Go and its build package system. I can use uh, 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 Node, if, if I actually cared to, at its system and uh, Perl uh, at its dependency system, and they don't trip over one another. Uh, I can have Perl and, and I do have Perl and Go programs on the same system uh, maintained by as part of, part of one of three distros, and they simply continue to work. So they they have made it possible for me not to solve 
some really painful manual problems. So your point about quality control is really important. Security is a big issue and a completely unsolved. We're all ignoring it, to be honest. Yes. And I would like to see a solution, but I can't even think of one. Anyway, but that's, yeah. it is it, the it, distro, it, it, we it, like to think it's the distro's responsibility, but they haven't taken it on. They are, they are experiments. Uh, uh, the experiment with uh, basically trusted Linux, uh, sorry, uh, the equivalent of trusted Solaris is interesting, but it was somewhat unsuccessful. <laughs> it could have succeeded, but there wasn't enough energy there. And that's told us something about security. It's told us that some parts of it are, are solve problems that are too hard, that are too expensive to use the solutions. Anyway, I've certainly run out of time, so thank you, everybody.